This is my FGC9. When I started this project, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, but the prospect of being able to build a gun anywhere seemed pretty enticing to me. What I knew is someone could make this in the woods in Europe, so with my limited tools, I was going to try it in my tiny apartment. I had never really done anything like this before, so with the very little room I already had, I at least made sure everything was well ventilated before I started. Instead of going with the EMC barrel, I decided to opt for the RP9 barrel instead, in which you could probably find some adapters for on Thingiverse. I also went with the wellless bolt design. There are a lot of different variations of this, but the one I used had a lot more drilling. A drill press will make this significantly easier, however you can get away with a drill and a folding table if you don't have one. Mine came out... usable. I will recommend though, if you do decide to go with this design, be sure to fully tighten your bullet catch, because if you don't, it has a tendency of going flying off. This really shouldn't be an issue you have if you actually follow the instructions, but if this does happen to you though, my fix is JP welding that sucker right back on, and by some miracle, it lasted up to somewhere around 500 rounds until this happened. While I didn't do it this time, you can also 3D print your own fire control group. While I don't have too much experience with this one, all I would say is, it works. While I don't want this to turn into a build guide, another thing I probably should say though is, make sure your firing pin is the correct length. For some reason, my gun kept jamming with steel and aluminum case ammo. Brass, a-okay. If your primers look like this, consider shortening your firing pin just a little bit. For some reason that I cannot fully explain, that fixed my issue. When it comes to reviews though, I definitely have more experience shooting handguns than, um, pistols. But really, what else can I say? This isn't a very complex gun. I mean, I can tell you that the mag weld is pretty good, and it's pretty accurate. As for the durability goes, I've shot at least 600 rounds and I don't think I've seen a single crack on the frame. Granted, mine is basically a range toy, so I don't know how hardcore you guys might want to be with yours. But where the FGC really shines, though, is how easy to build it is. Let's take a look at another gun you might be possibly considering. This is a Mod 9 by Darewood. It's smaller, surprisingly heavier than the FGC 9, but it is a little bit better balanced. And it also has more room for attachments. And it definitely does have less felt recoil than the FGC 9. However, the Mod 9 is significantly harder to build than the FGC 9, especially if you're a beginner like I. I actually had an issue where my end cap blew right off. That's not to say it's dangerous. On the contrary, it was my fault that it happened. But that's for a video for another day. What I am trying to say is if you're a beginner like I was, it's probably a smarter idea to start off with something simpler like the FGC9. The guide is basically idiot proof, and once you finish it, it should definitely give you the experience to move on to more complex designs. Of which, there are many, many, many designs out there for you to try. So whether or not you choose to build the FGC9 as your first choice, just pick something that you find interesting. Take it from a guy who's never touched a drill before this. Anyone can make this if you try. So I would recommend the FGC9 to anyone who's interested in 3D printed guns. My next video should be on the Mod 9 and hopefully by then I'll have a real camera and something better than a Elite Gamer headset. So until whenever that may be, Enjoy being on a watch list.